Hi folks, this is uh, Dr. Manon here from Blue Peanut Medical Education. Right, listen, I'm speaking to you today about GCSE requirements. Lots of students are contacting us this time of year, um, unsurprisingly, asking us about grade requirements and so forth um, at GCSE level. What will get them into medical school and what won't get them into medical school? And for that reason, I'm doing the blog today. Now then, GCSE requirements for the 2021 entry. I've had a look through all the uh, university websites and this is what is, is quite apparent. You need grade sevens or sixes at least, all right, in your core subjects, such as English, maths, and science, all right? Most universities want a minimum of five subjects. Um, and actually, the grades for those, they also need to be sevens and sixes at least, if not more. The exemptions are some universities, for example, where they will allow dual award sciences. For example, Cardiff, they insist on 66, i.e. BB for the dual award, and other universities have similar requirements as well. Guys, don't forget, this is the bare minimum, okay? And it's very important that you recognize that. Um, if you look at the Freedom of Information uh, reports, they will tell you that most students are getting A stars, A star stars, so high grades uh, throughout those five, seven, or eight subjects. So be aware of that. Now, in terms of um, low GCSE grades, i.e. some of you might have some good grades and some not so good grades, again, be careful where you apply. Some universities might be okay with that, some might not be so okay. My personal advice, contact the universities individually and speak to them. Don't just apply blindly and make assumptions, right? Now, in terms of why the universities want these uh, grades, from you at GCSC level, it's simply because it gives them an idea as to how you will perform as a medical student, whether you will have the ability to see through the study during medical school and going into your clinical years and to become a doctor eventually. So it's a good indicator of how you will be in the future. Now, like I said, any exceptional areas do contact universities. Some of you have asked me, all right, that what about resits? What about sitting extra GCSEs? Well, again, that's something you need to discuss with the medical uh, uh, schools because some will allow resits, others won't allow, others will have stipulation in terms of time. For example, resits have to be done within a 12 month period or the next batch of uh, uh, subjects have to be done within 12 months. So again, be wary of all this. Don't just apply blindly, all right? Now, extenuating circumstances, that's another thing that you might, some of you might have an, uh, might, might have an issue with, uh, for whatever reason, um, illness, bereavement, or whatever might have affected how you performed in your GCSEs. Well, if that's the case, make sure you speak to your schools, your tutor who does your references uh, for, when, for when you apply to UCAS, they can actually mention these things. Uh, within your reference. You can, of course, mention it within your personal statement, but I'm not so sure how useful that is because you're taking up valuable space. Remember, there's a word count there, so you need to try and get that into the tutor's reference. And again, that can affect the expected grades that they'll put you in for um, at A-level. Now, those of you that might fall into the widening participation group, and what I mean by that is people who are from a certain uh, demography, people from certain backgrounds, certain locations, I'll do more of this in another blog so that I can explain this more thoroughly. But if you do fall into the widening participation category, for example, um, you know, it, it, lower GCSEs from uh, where, whichever schools you co come from, or for example, the uh, location or the postcode that you live at, or the actual location of the school or the college might be from a certain area. Now that could be played to your advantage in that some universities will give you extra credits uh, for applying to that medical school and you might get in that way. So do have a look at the medical school websites, see what the widening uh, pro participation programs like, and then that will give you an idea as to whether you should apply there or not. Now then, um, last but not least, make sure you study the medical school websites thoroughly because um, they change, they change very often. So on a yearly basis, on, uh, especially when you, before you apply, you must check their websites and make sure that the universities you apply to are the right ones. Take care, all the best. My name is Dr. Abdul Manan from Blue Peanut Medical Education. Take care, bye-bye.